Hello guys, this is your boy D giving you a Saturday's episode on release titled Left Behind. This is the second episode of release. This is a great series again. Guys, have you not, if you have not seen the uh, episode of, uh, have you not seen the release episodes, you go again, it's on own. It's on 10 o'clock on Saturdays. I encourage you guys to watch it. It's a great series and you will not regret it. Right? Before we go on, to, to those people who are just coming to my channel, hey, uh, subscribe to my channel to see more of my video, more of my uploads. Again, comment on my videos. I will always read your comments, guys. I love reading your comments, and of course, thumbs it up, you know, and of course, share my videos and all that good stuff. And of course, let's get on to this review, shall we? Let's go. All right. Basically, we got this new uh, inmate called Michael. He's out. He's out of prison, right? We find out Michael is was is like a talk. Michael is raised by his grandparents, his mother, his mother's uh, grandparents. So basically, he's raised by his grandparents. His grandmother was getting ready to see her grandson. She's called. She's happy, getting dressed up. You know, he's basically glad to see him out of prison. Hug him, embrace him, support him, all that good stuff, right? And we see the you see his family coming through. They were waiting for him to come out, and he comes out, and he's just like so happy to see them. They hugging all that good stuff, whatever, whatever, whatever. We realized that Michael was in prison for eighteen years for two counts of armed robbery. Wow, two counts for nineteen years, eighteen years. That's eighteen years that you just missed out on life. We found out that he wasn't even married, didn't have a wife, so he just, he missed out on stuff, he missed out on his life. It's, it's crazy. This wrong, wrong, this wrong choice can just change the, change the future, change the destiny, man. It's crazy. That's why you gotta be careful what, you know, who you hang out with, kind of friends you hang out with, and, and the company you keep. It's very important, y'all. All right. Then we going there even one scene I seen him in the car and he was having the phone in his hand and I guess he heard a texting sound. He wasn't used to it. He would you know, he said, What's the sound? The the fam one of the family members I wanna say his cousin or sister or whatever was like, Hey, this is this is somebody texting him. He's like, Can you make it stop? And and they were like, This is what the phone does. So it's like he has to get used to that. It's like it's crazy, it's like you see him struggling just to get used to a simple thing as a phone that has texting sounds. It's just, it's just, it's like, wow. Like, I don't know if I, see, I couldn't be in prison because, uh, you know, to be in prison, you not to see basic things and you have somebody tell you what to do and what you have to live for, when you gotta get up, when to eat, when to do this, when to do that. You lose all types of freedom. It's just, it's crazy. It's definitely, it's just something you have to really, wow. Anyway, um... Sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. We find out he misses his dad. He talks about his dad, how he wanted he, he it's a very sweet thing. He's glad to be out of prison, but he misses his dad. He basically his dad was his guess his being biggest supporter. And one scene he see him, you know, he knows to recognize his father's car, how you say that, you know, that was his daddy's car. He used to smoke tobacco in there, or whatever. And you can see him in the side of the car, he's just crying, he's breaking down. I broke down because it's like, wow, he really Really, obviously they had some type of connection going up, going up with his dad, Michael. What Michael I'm talking about, and you know, so when you find out his father passed in uh, February of 2012. So, you know, it's definitely a heartbreaking situation they to go through. You know, you know, my father. I was never that close to my father, so I don't know. So, you know, I'll be the same. If I lost my mother, I'm very close because I'm very close to my mother. I think I'm going to give you a story of time later on why I'm not really that, was that close to my father. Maybe in, in later videos, I'll give you a more story time of my life and situation. So, look, at that, look out for that, YouTube. Look out for that. Then we see Jermaine. Um, I think Jermaine was, is the next scene. He got out of bed. And you can see him even then. He got out of bed. He's, just, he's so used to getting out of bed. He got. He had a good night's sleep. He's just happy to be freedom. 
to get out of bed and relax, not to be on guard. Because again, in, in, like you said, in prison, he, he couldn't really sleep too good because he had to watch it out. Someone might attack him or whatever, so he had to always be on guard. It was like the first time he was actually had freedom to just, you know, get out of bed, go to the bathroom, get up when he wanted to. Nobody has to, you know, force him to get up. And then he finally, he had some type, I want to say he had 11 o'clock appointment to see his uh, promo, promo, probation officer. And, you know, and later we found out in, when he came, went to see his probation officer, you know, they had given him a curfew room saying his curfew room's from 6 to 6. It's for, say, 7 days a week and it's for 9 months. That's crazy. So it's like you're out of, you, you, you out of prison, like he was saying, but you're back into prison because, in a sense, you, you, ha you can't do whatever you want. You're still on a curfew. Like, it's like a little kid. Like, you can't go out to this time this time. I mean, you know, so it's like you have to, you know, it's frustrating because you you going to do things from 6 to 6. So you basically have 12 hours a day. That's all you have. The other days, you have you can't go out. You have to be at home. And you break, you just go back to prison. It's crazy. And it's, for, and it's for nine months, so. That's a whole, you know, long time. So, you know, I don't know if he gonna really stick to his behavior. I don't know if he gonna break the curfew. So, I'm talking about Jermaine. I don't know if Jermaine gonna break the curfew or what have you. So, you know, and clearly Jermaine's upset saying, he made a good point saying, they hope, you know, it's like, I'm not truly free. It's like they give you a little bit of sense of freedom, but it's still like a little leash on you like a little dog saying, you know, not truly free, but I'm thinking, Jermaine, you know, the choices you made put you in that situation, too. So, you can't really get mad, you know, you know, we gotta figure why, you know, you, you kill, you kill a person, you have to acknowledge that you kill a person, you murder a person, and you're abusive to your wife, so it's, you know, let's, let's really find out. Because they had, the, the person you killed, they had no freedom, they, they gone. So, you know, it's very hard for me to really, I'm trying to, you know, feel sorry for somebody, but it's like, for Jermaine, but, you made a lot of stupid choices, sir. Right, and then the next thing we have is, uh, we have K's story, um, K's, uh, we found out K's was talking to Rachel, and we found out K was like the older sister who was trying to protect Rachel for making bad decisions, so, Say so don't do the stuff that I do. You know, Kay was a drug addict. We found out Kay's, uh, Kay's and Rachel's mom was an alcoholic, and they, found, and they went. She, her mom went to out went to prison at a young age. You see, kind of see how Kay got her behavior from her mama. They even so they were showing in, like statistics how sometimes if a if the parents went to prison, most likely the kids will follow their footsteps. So. In that case, the situation, Kay's mom, she, you know, Kay followed Kay's mom footsteps. And then you find out the reason her mom went to prison because she went to prison for killing her boyfriend. I was like, wow. Wow. So Kay, growing up, didn't know how to become a good mother. So she, you know, she missing the twos. So she don't know how, you know, she's just doing the best she can how to raise her son Simonin. I can't get it. I'm going to call him S. Right, we're gonna, call, we're gonna call him S because I can't pronounce the word. I ain't gonna pronounce the word. I'm gonna butcher the words you are, so I'm gonna say S. All right, let's see y'all. And the next thing you see, uh, K goes to church, and she anxiety saying that she was resurrected. And then the church says, "Let's give it for K," saying, "Give it for testimony." She gives a great testimony, whatever, of saying, "I'm glad to be out of here. Just pray for me, so I'm gonna go back to the prison." So, you know, so that was a great scene on that one. And then we found out that Kev wants to build a relationship with his children. Again, he's on the church saying he wants to build a relationship with his children. He said he was a narcissistic father. He's a deadbeat dad. He never supported them. He wants to make things right, which I'm proud for. I'm thinking, you know, Kevin, I'm actually, you know, one person I'm actually really for is Kevin. I want Kevin to do it. I think Kevin's going to be the one that's going to really change could do the right things, you know, so I, I could see Kevin, really want, he acknowledged that he messed up, he's taking responsibility, he's doing the things to correct it, so, big ups to you, Mr. Kevin, big ups, you know what I'm saying, 
You know, don't give up. I'm rooting for you, bro. Keep on going, bro. Keep on going. I'm rooting for you, man. Keep on going. Keep on going. And then we, you know, he has, he has a son, Kevin Jr., that who went to prison. He never really spent much time with him, so he's, you know, and he has a, another daughter. I forget the daughter's name. I'm going to call her D. Because her first letter of her name is D. She's went to uh, Phoenix, Phoenix, so she, she, he hasn't really seen much of his kids growing up, growing up because of course he's in prison. And I don't know if I, that's a good question. If I was a, you know, son of a daughter or parents who went to prison, that's crazy because they messing up, messed up, you mess up, up all day, all your life. You don't know, you, you can't really interact with them because they're in the pine jail cell. You, you know, your friends have, you go to parents who you go to, because you're, you're in jail. You know who you go to. I mean, you have your mom, your you know great, great grandparents raising you, but it's not the same. Have your parents with you, so that's that's rough, man. That's crazy. That's truly a rough place to be. Sorry, Sorry y'all. So uh, you see, uh, you see, uh, Kevin Junior. Coming out saying that he went to prison for robbery, I think, and he says, you know, I miss my dad. I want to build a relationship with my dad. I'm a changed man. Blah blah blah. I want to make things right. The next thing we see, Jermaine is and his sisters outside, is looking at the stars, and Jermaine is like, <clears throat> and you see, Jermaine is just reminiscing of the childhood, you know, think of his childhood, saying that I want Mama to see me to get out. And mom didn't get to see him because she died on the 50th birthday of cancer. Wow. So he, you know. And even though he, he says he don't like being outside, having the 66 six, 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 six curfew, but he's like, I'm going to hold still because God has something for me. And he's like, I'm going to just hold still. So, you know. I'm moving for Jermaine and, uh, and uh, Kevin. I think they're going to make the most progress, progress and I say Kevin will make the ultimate progress. And then, you see Michael check out his own house, his old, old house, his room has sneakers, games, video games, and, you know, he's just taking them back, like, this is my old house, like, you see everything back in time, like, old, into the game controllers in the 90s, and, and, you know, and it's just, like, you could just, it breaks your heart to see that he really just, like, you know, and he found out he used to be a football player that he could become, you know, turn pro because of one choice he made was hang out with the wrong crew and, you know, and he did some armed robbery or whatever. Just one choice that just, 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 just took away his dreams. Like, he just, you know, like you said, he could have been married, he could have had kids and he could have had a wife. But he's in prison now. Now he's out of prison, and wow, you know, and, and then to get a job is hard because he, you know, Quinn was hard to get a job because, you know, I'm, I don't know if he got GED or what. So hopefully he got GED or something because when you get when your Quinn was hard, these certain people don't want to hire you because they're scared or whatever, which is understandable. So it's like you know, so they don't get hired, they tend up end up just going back to prison. It's like, well, can't get a job, so I just do things I know. I know. And then the next thing we see, uh, Kay and Rachel, they're talking about, the, uh, well, Kay is talking about, told Rachel about her addiction, saying her addiction is like, it's like a disease. Like, once I take that drug, it's like I'm a new person. I can't break it. And Rachel's kind of like, her stand is like, well, we'll skit. You have a choice. You know, I, you know, you just, you gotta want to stop. Which is true. You have a choice to want to stop. But once you take the drug, any kind of drug, is it, it also your you know, you know, mind process or whatever. So because it alters your mind process, it's like, it's, it basically just, you know, you know, you can't stop. And it's like, in case trying to communicate to her sister, like, I want to stop, but it's like, but they, Kay kind of, kind of says the same thing, like, it's my choice at the end of the day. I want to stop. I want to be there for my son and I need y'all prayers. So, that was a good scene on that one. And see. What is the next scene? We see uh 
Kevin's talking to his uh, to his son, uh, Kevin Jr. He shows Kevin Jr. the same spot that took him to prison, saying that he robbed uh, you know you know some lady with some money, some clothes, and it was a very small amount, say fifty dollars, just to buy some dope. He got arrested and basically got arrested. He was in prison and basically Kevin Jr. Was shocked to see that he was like, "Wow, we both went to prison," and but Kevin Junior was like, "I want to build a relationship," and they were like, and I can see Kevin and Kevin Junior gonna have a great relationship because I think they both want to do the right things or whatever, whatever. So Kevin Junior and, and Kevin, I call Kevin Senior was to say that, and he said Kevin Junior really take it in, and I think he want to change his life. I think Kevin's gonna be a great role model, or whatever, whatever. So I think that's going to be a great, you know, thing. And both of them are great, well, you know, he's going to be a great role model for his son. So again, I'm rooting for him. And then the next thing we see him, he wants to, he goes and talks to his daughter. He meets his, meet his daughter, his daughter, and he's, his daughter's like, you know, glad to see you, but I really don't need you anymore because you hurt me. You, didn't, you weren't there to protect me. You should have been there to protect me. And it kind of hits Kevin home, but he, he just says, you know, you're right. I didn't do my job as a father. I'm going to be dad, but I want to make it up to you. And he just tells her, you've grown, and he just says something. So, I, again, Kevin is really, you know, is, you know, he doesn't make excuses. He doesn't say, you know, you're wrong, this and that. He just doesn't say that. You should feel that way. He says, you know what, I own it. I screwed up. I, you know, I blanked up. And they be, you know, start from now. I, you know, daughter's like, well, you can't start because you're too late. And it's like, in my ch in my childhood, I need you then. Well, well, you can't do anything now. And it's kind of like, true, but y'all could build a, a good relationship from now. And I think as far as, as far as reaching out, and I think her daughter just needs some time to process of that. And I think she going to be with her father. And then the next thing you see, Michael with Darius. Not, not Michael. Um, Jermaine with Darius. They're playing football. And he he tells Jermaine tells Darius that I'm here for you if you want to talk, and Darius like I'm just glad you're back blah blah blah, you know I don't, I just glad you're here and that, and then he, and then he goes to Asia he wants to connect to Asia he says well, I'm not gonna connect to Asia because you know Asia's a grown woman he she needs to take the initiative, and I'm like sir, is your you need to you need to be a man and connect to your kids because you screwed up, you killed her. You know, kill, you murdered somebody, all right? She's seen that. So as a man, as a parent, you need to be the bigger person. And you wrong in that. So I really wasn't feeling Mike on that situation, Jermaine on that situation with Asia. So I was like, no. And I think I covered all the episodes. I think that's pretty much it of the episode. So we got to see some progress being made, each, you know, that... They are trying to, we can, you know, the men are trying to reconnect with the ones that they, they hurt. So, like Kevin, I'm rooting for Kevin. Of course, I'm rooting for, uh, you know, Jermaine and Kay. So, this is a great episode. Again, I give it an A plus. If you have not seen it already, I will say again. This comes on Saturdays at own at the own network at uh, ten o'clock. Go watch it. It's a great. Uh, you can check out my review on of last week's episode. You, you know, on that it's on my channel. You know, watch that and um, again subscribe to my channel, comment on my channel, and again share my channel and all that good stuff. Anyway, this is your boy D. I am. I am out.